Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode 652. Do you feel dismissed by your doctor? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, medical director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today I'm going to talk about something that is not ex- clinical, but it's more social. It has more to do with, with doctors and patient relationships. And um, I titled it, Do You Feel Dismissed by Your Doctor? And that is because I hear this on a daily basis from new patients that come from having seen many doctors before they saw me, not getting any answers, not being communicated with, or worse yet, feeling like they've been diminished or dismissed or belittled by their doctor when they ask questions about menopause and when they ask questions about how they can feel better. Honestly, I've had patients say that their doctor said, this is all in your head. You can just like, just suck it up. Which I can't imagine any doctor saying to anybody, actually. Um, they... They actually have said that their doctors have told them to be brave. This is normal. It's normal to have hot flashes all night and never sleep and feel terrible and, and, and gain 20 pounds in, you know, a short period of time. And I mean, honestly, you know, telling somebody's gone through all of this, this is traumatic. You shouldn't be talked to that way. This is not something that you should be talked to and it should not be ignored. A lot of doctors just go over it and don't answer the question. But one of my favorites is, the doctors, and there are more than one, that say, oh, I don't believe in hormones. I mean, really? It's not a religion. It is something we were trained to do or not trained very well by the American College of OBGYN. We didn't get very much training. They told us to do, you know, give some oral tablets or put a patch on somebody, see you later. They didn't teach us about testosterone. They didn't teach us about all the other things that come with uh, menopause, like arthritis and depression, and anxiety, and more than hot flashes, but headaches. I mean, so many symptoms happen when you become menopausal, and even before that, when you lose your testosterone. And believe it or not, the American College has not even accepted the fact that women have testosterone, make testosterone in their ovaries, and actually need testosterone when they're premenopausal to feel normal and be productive. So... This is, this is a huge deal for me because women have been treated like second-class citizens by medicine forever. In the 60s, when we complained about anything, we were given, women were given Valium and diet pills. And they then drank and smoked too, so they, they don't remember much of their, you know, that decade. So they were also, um, there was very little research on estrogen. They were given estrogen without, tes- without progesterone. So many people developed um, uterine cancer. So what was the response to that? They took estrogen. They said estrogen can't be prescribed instead of saying you need progesterone with it. I I mean, it was just like, we'll throw the baby out with the bathwater and let you guys suffer. And then we had the, in 2002, we had the study of, um, the study in, uh, of the WHI study that said, oh, hormones are going to cause cancer. Well, it's not hormones, it's not estrogen, it's not testosterone, it's Provera, which is a specific progestin that was added in the arm of the study that did cause or did increase the risk of breast cancer. The other two arms of the study without progestin did not. So, first of all, that's one of the complaints and that's one of the backups and the history behind all of this. So, um, there's a lot of reasons for this. I think a lot of the reasons include how we're trained in medicine. And remember, most people who are practicing now who are mature physicians like me were trained 45 years ago, and we should be learning new things all the time. However, we're so busy because of the way medicine has gone that we don't have time to learn things. 
So medicine has become run by um, insurance companies, and therefore we're unable to stay in business unless we see so many patients a day, which doesn't work for most of us. Um, I was trained when I was in medical school, believe it or not, and I'm, I believe that this is still one of the things that doctors are trained with, that don't ever believe what a patient tells you because they all lie and they really meant women, <laughs> or people with substance abuse, but mostly women. So they, the, they taught us that. I just had to laugh about that when I was taught that, but I was in a class of all men. So, you know, I didn't have a lot of, they weren't all men, but there were a few women, but on a daily basis, I was mostly with men. So I couldn't really complain about that. So it's medical training, that's just one example. Another example is, the uh, FDA approved Viagra after six months, and then they took three years and millions and millions of dollars of research to find out that a testosterone patch for women um, was not approved just because it caused facial hair. Now, okay, you can you can laser it, you can you can uh, wax it, you can you can you can do many things to facial hair to get rid of it. It wasn't causing a beard; it was just causing some facial hair. That's not a reason for a drug not to come to the market. Why would they do that to us except they didn't want us to have testosterone, which would make us feel so much better during, especially during the last half of our lives. Another thing that is true of the profession is that American College of OBGYN asks for a lot of training in OB and in surgery, but a few hours of training in menopause and all of the things that come after, you're done having babies. It, so I find them to be at fault as well. So this is why this stuff happens. Now, if you really want to find out why the, some of the drugs that we take don't work for us or, or, or give us side effects, that is because we're second-class citizens. They have never tested these drugs. No drugs that came out before 2014, except for hormones, were tested on women. And I'm not even sure th those were tested on women. In any case, nothing was tested on women before 2014. So if a drug like statins, which have terrible side effects in women, or um, let's see, what else? other drugs, there's a whole host of them. Um, Ambien, Ambien causes women to sleep eat and to not be able to wake up in the morning, yet they never tested us. And they never tested us on Synthroid. Synthroid works great for men, but not for women. Women need combined armor thyroid or, or MP thyroid. We don't do well with Synthroid. We do well with those combined T4, T3 drugs. So we're not at the top of the list. So if there's anybody who um, has been discriminated against, it's those women who are over 40 who are no longer having babies. So knowing all this, I will say that maybe <clears throat> Since I was trained when there were very few women in the field, now there are half women in OBGYN, I would hope that these women would have the sense not to repeat the things they were trained with, they were trained by men with, and not repeat, I don't believe in hormones, or not to, and I'm, but they do. Because I ask the patients, is your doctor a woman or a man? And they'll say, oh, she's a woman. Okay, well, and they don't even have to be very old. They could have been trained recently. So I don't believe that this has, I think women are propagating the problem. I mean, women in medicine are, are just trusting that the people before them told them the, what they should do, and it's not, it's not good for us. We need a revolution. And one of the revolutions is if you have a doctor who doesn't listen to you, who tells you to suck it up or to, doesn't attend to your problem, or my favorite is, I treat them. They go back for a pelvic from their GYN, and the, their GYN says, why are you going to her? I could give you hormones. And the patient says, well, I've told you for three years in a row, I've asked you for hormones, I've asked you for help, and you said nothing. And those doctors were women. And I'm, I'm really sorry to say that embarrasses me, but those doctors were women. So they're, they, they're, their egos hurt when I make their patient better. But, and I, I don't know if I would ever have the guts to say that. I would have said, wow, what's she doing? Let me see, let me find out what she's doing to see if I can, you know, like help my other patients. But they don't say that. They just say, 
you know, oh, I, I can give you something. In any case, this is not fair. You should not take it. It happens in many other areas of American life where it shouldn't. Um, we literally, women literally make the world go round. We take care of the babies. Um, we don't leave our babies when we get divorced. We, we continue to take care of them. We have the bur burden and the pleasure of having children for society. But the government has decided that we're too expensive. And they're always trying to push the payment for men's diseases and men's problems higher and those for us lower. In any case, there was a, um, just to give you an example, there was a um, case, I'd say 10 years ago, where I was looking at the reimbursements. You know, the government puts out something called the Federal Register every five years, and it tells Medicare what it, should what it should pay a doctor for each treatment. So I went through the Federal Register to see what the government was telling people to pay me for a hysterectomy. And that meant a hysterectomy, the, the preoperative visit, all of my staff's work to get somebody on the schedule and to get hospitalization done and insurance paid, and for me to do the procedure and then follow the patient in the hospital and then follow the patient for six weeks after discharge. Uh, in 1985, when it was a man's world, I was paid $3,800 for that. Um, now you know that everything's doubled at least, and they were paying less than $1,000 for that. So what that did was it motivated doctors to stop doing hysterectomies. So women were harmed by that act of Congress. So the next thing I need, to t I need to tell you is, I then looked at comparable men's procedures in urology, and urologists were paid twice as much for a comparable procedure, all the way down the line. I somehow got to the head of the accounting in Washington, one of the, um, actually it was a senator from Iowa, and I talked to his secretary, not him, and I, I got a hold of them. They looked at this, and what, Medic what Medicare did was they decreased the reimbursement for the urologists. Now, that evened it up, but that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> I was looking for raising us up to what they paid men. And it's, that's only one case where this has been fixed. It's not fixed in any of these other areas. So we've been behind the eight ball a long time. And when I, was, when I recognized all these inequalities when I was in medical school, I looked at them as things that would pass by the time I was, I don't know, 30, 40, 50. I mean, I'm nearly 70 and they haven't passed. We still have these problems. We still have drugs that haven't been retested on women to give us new, um, new uh, guidelines or new um, side effects. Or we also don't have doses for little people. We have doses based on 170 pound males. That's not good enough for most males or low enough for most females, and it's one size fits all. So there's many things to be, fit, to be fixed in the area of medicine for women. The only thing that you can really control at this point is that you can control who your doctor is. If you don't hear a doctor that's sympathizing with you, that understands your problem and is trying to help you, you need to leave. Walk with your feet. Go to somebody else who actually is going to listen to you and take care of you and offer you help for your symptoms. So that's pretty much um, all I can ask of people who are listeners or readers, uh, if you're reading along with the blog. But that is something that I think is very important because that's the only way the message is going to come across and the only way we'll get equality. So be bold and fight for yourself. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.